Hi, this is Mike Sayers from Mechanical Simulation. This is part two in our video series on ADAS. This will be talking about sensors and signs and a little bit about the symbol stack. In part one, you saw lots of examples with moving objects representing traffic vehicles. Here you see our Ego vehicle with a sensor that's detecting a traffic sign. We'll take a look at this. Just to refresh, let's look up at the library menu here under ADAS and we have the multiple moving objects that we saw in the previous video. We still have single moving object and ADAS sensors to look at. So let's look at the uh, ADAS sensors. This is linked to the vehicle that we are running or that we just ran. It has XYZ coordinates for where it's located. It has yaw pitch and roll for the direction that it's aimed. It has a drop down here to tell where we want to have the sensor located. It's in the motor vehicle sprung mass. Other options would be a trailer or a moving object or a, another unit if we have multiple vehicles in our simulation. To see the properties real quickly, we'll look at the echo file for the run that was made here. It has our one sensor in it. We have our XYZ coordinates. We have our aim uh, angles. We have the distance that we can look to the uh, right which is 45 degrees, minus 45 because of our axis system. Looking to the left, we can only look 2 degrees. That's because we're using this uh, for U.S. convention of driving on the right side of the road. So we're mainly looking on the right side of the road. Besides those, we also have a range of 100 meters, which is the, uh, is, if it's further than that, we cannot see it with the sensor. Now the next thing we want to look at is the target which is down here this is a custom uh, object screen and we're looking at a sign here's the animation for it the animator shape for it we have four kinds of objects that this could be uh, our traffic objects tend to be cylinders or rectangles signs tend to be segments and they're convenient because we can set them so they can only be viewed from one side. In this case, it's 140 degrees is the whole field of view in which you can see it. Down in the miscellaneous field here, we have three lines that are curious looking if you haven't seen them before. This says type O underscore and then brackets and an O. Now the O with the brackets around it is a symbol stack variable. That will be written to the uh, sent, sent to the math model using the current object number. So if this is the first object, that will be a 1. And when we look at the echo file over here, we see that in fact those are in there. There's type O is set to 100. Where did it get 100? Well, that's the value of this parameter that was user defined. MSG OBJ, that's right here. Uh, that's 24.5. How did it get that out of 55? Well, we specified that the 55 was in miles per hour, and when it's read, the math model automatically converts from uh, user units 55 to internal units, which would be meters per second, which uh, looks like that would be 24.5872. We also use the symbol stack for the sensor number. We'll follow this link up here to see a plot setup. So we see these brackets again, except this time instead of being around an O, they're around an S. We have MSG S brackets S, and then IDS brackets S. In this case, the S is the current sensor number. Let's take a look at how this plot appears. Here are with the video on the left and the plot that we just specified on the right. And we see that indeed it is S1 uh, used for both of these variables. One is the message that we're receiving, there is none, and the other is the ID, which is minus one. Now as we go forward a little bit, we see that there is a blue vector going from the sensor in the vehicle to that speed limit sign. It's getting the 24.587, which is the meters per second speed that's being indicated from the sign. We'll look at the speed here and see that yes, the, uh, the speed of the vehicle at the end of the run is up around 55 miles per hour so it did heed the speed limit sign and change the target speed accordingly. If you look at the online help for the ADAS uh, 
sensors and moving objects, you see that sensors have a bunch of detection variables. Each one of these is a combination of a sensor number and an object number, and they have things like the ID and the message that we saw, plus about 20 other variables that can all be used in VS commands for whatever reason you, you see fit. We're going to look at one more example here where we have a stop sign that's added. It uh, has the animation that we would like to see, and it has a type down here for a stop sign and a message of 3.5 meters. Here is the simulation result showing. We detect the stop sign, come to a complete stop 3.5 meters from the uh, sign itself, and then proceed on to see the speed limit sign like we did before. We provide the sensors and the target objects but normally it's the uh, customer who has to provide the algorithms for controlling the vehicle. Maybe hardware in the loop, maybe a complicated simulink program. For the purpose of demonstrating our sensors and moving objects, we use a lot of VS commands to provide the controls. Here are VS commands to define new parameters that we'll use in some of the logic. Then when we go into our sensor here, down at the lower right, we have a uh, setup for some events. We define a few more variables of interest or that we will be wanting to use. And then have our first event here where we're looking at uh, detection and saying, is that a stop sign? Is it a speed sign? If it's a speed sign, we change the target speed and come back. We're mainly just setting targets for our internal controllers. Well, thank you for watching the video. Uh, you might want to check the next in our series, which will be animated pedestrians and animals and bicycles. See how those work.